What's going on, everybody? Jazzy Jeff in the house. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm back. You're back. We're all back again. And today, I'm thrilled because I have a ton of cool stuff to show you. So today I will be showing you all of the crazy, cool, awesome, radical pickups from this past weekend. Uh, obviously I gave you guys a little bit of a kind of sneak peek uh, while I was at the convention. So uh, for those who saw that video, you might, you might have seen a couple of these items already. Uh, but for everyone else, let's dig on in. So as always, I'm back in Chile, Pennsylvania. Well, Center County for that matter. And I was just talking about this in one of my last videos, uh, like a week ago. Uh, it was really random, the weather was like in the 60s, and people had shorts on and windows open. I had my windows open and all this pollen and shit was coming in and it was totally fucking up my allergies. Um, but it was good to get out of town get some fresh air, breathe a little better, <coughs> and now I'm back. Alright, so first up, I'm just going to slam right into the fucking toys, man. So I'm excited for this one. Uh, you guys obviously saw this in the one video. I cleaned it up a little bit more. It was had some dust and dirt and stuff on it, so that's a much better look at Lieutenant Ripley from the Aliens film. Uh, on the back here, I, I should have showed this earlier, uh, it, so, it looks like sort of a stock photo uh, or, 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 or like a special promotional um, picture, and it's like a little cutout card, and that looks nothing like uh, Sigourney Weaver. Uh, the toy doesn't look a whole lot like Sigourney Weaver. The toy looks a lot more like that promotional special cutout up in the corner there. Uh, but that was sort of the charm with a lot of these Kenner toys. Uh, and then there you have sort of the cartoon looking version of her. Uh, they also had uh, Corporate Hicks, uh, Sergeant of Poem, a pony, hopefully I'm saying that right, Drake of course. Uh, Bishop, and then uh, Antax in Disguise. So, interesting characters. Then the Power Loader loader toy. That'd be a super fucking awesome one to get, that's for sure. So, some interesting stuff there. Looks like her stickers are upside down <laughs> in, in the box. Um, but this is uh, closed up for sure. And then this is the Aliens toy line. Uh, they have the Bull a Alien, the Scorpion Alien, Gorilla Alien, and the Alien Queen, of course, up top there. So, it's real unfortunate the box got wet or something. But, you know, what are you going to do? So, but my thing is, is no matter where I go, uh, if I get the opportunity, I have to pick up at least one box action figure toy. Uh, they usually go for pretty cheap, depending on where, where you get them. Some of the more rare stuff's going to be expensive, but I come across action figures anywhere between three to seven bucks, sometimes five, four bucks. So, you know, if you can afford a five dollar latte, skip latte for one day and pick yourself up an Aliens action figure. All right, moving along with the toys, um, my uh, buddy Scott had, uh, I had made a purchase from him, sort of a big, uh, giant video game purchase, and uh, he kind of split it into two separate um, transactions, so this was sort of the second box of stuff that he still owed me, and he lives in Hanover, and I'm like, well, you know what, dude? Save yourself the trouble, instead of mailing it to me, you know? I'll just pick it up from you when I come to Hanover. And he's like, oh, that's excellent. So, 
he was nice enough to throw some extra toys in there. Uh, I got the, you know, Screaming series, Peter Venkman. Unfortunately, he's broken. And his legs are a little broken, too. Not quite sure what's going on. And then, even weirder, is, like, his asshole is showing. So I'm not entirely sure what the hell that's all about. Because I have him already. Um, and he's not this loose. He's, he's not all, like, banged up like this. Um, but, you know, that's what happens with a lot of these older toys. Uh, these were also by Kenner. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're gonna get messed up over time. But it is pretty neat to see this Peter Bankman. Uh, but I, like I said, I already have it. But I appreciate any Ghostbuster toys. But this right here was kind of the big deal for me. Um, A, I don't have this. B, I've never had any of the Janines. So it's definitely really awesome to finally own a Janine action figure. Uh, not to mention it's the Screaming series. Except this one's like really weird. Her eyes pop out and these like ghost fish kind of surround her, <laughs> her head. So really strange for sure. Um, but really cool looking in really good condition. Uh, her legs are also kind of doing this weird thing. I don't know if they're supposed to be like together like that like I don't know it just looks weird to me but like I said before you know these toys get all bent up and shit over time but you can unbend them and you know they're they're malleable a little bit you just got to be careful not to break them so there you have it screaming Janine I think it was called Fright Features. I think that that was the, call, the the name of them. So I'm usually pretty good with uh, my Kenner toy knowledge, at least for the real Ghostbusters. At some point, I'll get around to showing you my Ghostbuster toys. I don't have many, so but I have some. So Simpsons related, of course, which I love almost anything Simpsons. Um, some of the newer Simpsons stuff is a little weird. Uh, I'll admit, you know. It's, uh, because so, some of the newer toys just aren't made as well as, uh, some, some of the older ones. And some of the older ones tend to be a little bit more, uh, unique or, like, rare. Uh, but here we have a Homer Simpson, um, a Rubik's Cube. Uh, my buddy Scott also gave this to me as part of the, uh, you know, goodies that he owed me. And uh, I love this thing. I can't stop playing with it. Uh, it's super interesting. Probably never going to figure it out. Um, but it's really cool. Um, I'd love to figure this out eventually so that I can, you know, display it with all my other Simpsons stuff that I have. Um, but for a newer Simpsons item, this is from 2001 Fox. Uh, this is definitely pretty cool. And uh, up next, like I said, staying in the realm of toys and Simpsons theme... Uh, this is from 2004, so a little bit newer. Um, apparently this is something you put in your car. I thought that this was just like, a, like, like a toy that when you click on it, <coughs> he burped, but he actually doesn't. Um, it's some kind of like car, like sensor or I mean like car toy thing that you put in your car. Um, because it's all one-liners, uh, by Hank Azaria, um, you know, doing the Homer voice, of course, and they're all pre-recordings, um, that have to do with driving, so check this out. Red light turn green. No! No! Right now! Okay, now! It worked! Uh, here's another one. Why don't you come here and say that, huh? That's what I thought. Turn your walker around and hobble away, Granny. That's a pretty good one. Oh, why do slow people love to be in front of me? Oh, why do fast people love to be behind me? <laughs> ah, nothing like a nice drive in the country to clear your head and soothe your... I'm up! I'm up! So as you can tell, they're all like driving jokes and stuff about issues you have in the car. So I guess this is kind of something fun you'd keep in your car, you know, to prevent you from road rage. Yeah, yeah, quit your waving. 
I'll move through the intersection when I'm good and ready, officer. <laughs> Car turning into crusty burger. Power is too resist. <laughs> Car turning into crusty burger. Your child might be an honor student, but you're a moron. <laughs> That's probably my favorite one. That's really good. I'll do one more. What is it? National Stupid Driver's Day? Alright. So, there's that. Alright, and then staying in the theme, the realm of The Simpsons. Um, that's it for the toys. Um, Scott was nice enough to give me The Simpsons Volumes 1, 2, and 3 on VHS. Uh, this is a triple box set from... Uh, 1997 uh, by 20th Century Fox, of course. Um, it has. Oh wow! Actually, I'm watching. I'm already watching one of the tapes right now. But it's got um, six episodes uh, from season uh, one. Uh, the six episodes are uh, Bart the General and Moaning Lisa. Which is fantastic because Moaning Lisa is the one with my favorite, one of my all-time favorite Simpsons characters, Bleeding Gum Murphy, Bleeding Gums Murphy. Um, we have the Crips of Wrath and Krusty gets busted. Uh, Crips of Wrath is an incredible episode, very good, and of course, Krusty gets busted. That is the episode where Sideshow Bob shows up for the first time, who would go on to become a major staple of the show. Uh, then, of course, there's No Disgrace Like Home and Life on the Fast Lane. And I actually think I might already own this tape. Um, I need to do a little bit of research and um, check around because um, I have a bunch of... Uh, Christmas movies and Christmas uh, TV shows and I know I have the Simpsons uh, Christmas episode and I might have had mixed some of my uh, Simpsons tapes in with that uh, so expect a Simpsons video at some point where I just show off my Simpsons VHS uh, collection um, but yeah man Life on the Fast Lane that is such an incredible episode uh, when Marge meets meets the French uh, bowl, bowler just really really good um, episode all around very touching very heart warming warming probably one of my all time favorite endings to an episode is Life on the Fast Lane so if you haven't seen it yet check it out another awesome thing that the Simpsons uh, VHS set came with. And I can't believe these are still in there because these always get thrown out. But there's all these inserts and everybody knows how much I love inserts. So let me move up close to the camera. So here we have the Simpsons, uh, a complete guide to our favorite family. Um, this is celebrating their 10th anniversary. I don't know if this is a, oh, okay, this is a book. Yeah, Harper Perennial. So this was a book that came out, I guess, in the 90s. So I would definitely like to get my hands on this. This would be pretty cool. Um, very interesting, you know, piece of history there, Simpsons history. And on the back here is how you get your $2 refund if you buy that book. So that's awesome. Uh, here we have a uh, advertisement for the Simpsons CD, Songs in the Key of Springfield by Rhino, which I have that. Uh, I'll be sure to show that in my uh, Simpsons video at some point. There is an advertisement for the t-shirt, so that's pretty neat, special offer. So there is that. Uh, then here uh, we have a uh, kids pack. Um, for some reason, Subway put a coupon in here, <laughs> so kind of random, uh, you know, get a dollar off a fit, foot long sub, so Subway, the way a sandwich should be, so whatever, <clears throat> Jesus, God, dying, <clears throat> that's random as shit. Uh, it's really funny, I was just watching the Poltergeist recently, 
Uh, so they're here. Fantastic pun. Um, this is the best of the Simpsons, first time on video. Cool man, get a $25 discount on framing when you purchased qualifying art from the Simpsons, including scenes from one of these episodes. So you can buy artwork from scenes from one of the episodes, which is pretty neat. Um, and then here is advertisement for watching The Simpsons on Sunday. Uh, obviously, as you guys all know, The Simpsons always air on Sundays. The house is now a home. The life-size replica of America's favorite TV house has been built in Las Vegas. And I actually remember that uh, Louis Anderson, the comedian, uh, they did this whole thing with him where he did a tour of the house. And there was a family that actually won it. Um, I don't know the details of whether the house is still around and who's living in it and all that stuff. But that's actually pretty cool. And I remember that happening. I remember that being a big TV moment in, in cable history and TV history. I remember that being a really big deal. And I remember watching all that live. And uh, it was really awesome. And um, yeah, man, The Simpsons has uh, changed quite a bit. But I can always relive the days, the glory days. With all this cool stuff. And then finally, my God, this is a lot. Uh, you always get those business reply mails uh, with stuff. So here, uh, this is celebrate with your favorite animated family all year long. This is a global fan fest. The Simpsons Global Fan Fest 2000 calendar. So there was a bunch of stuff happening in and around, I guess, you know, LA and various places. Um... And you could go to the website and compete in this stuff. And there was different events that you could go to. Uh, here's advertisements for both the Treehouse of Horror tapes as well as the uh, political episodes. So those are really cool. I'd love to get my hands on those. And then you can keep in touch with The Simpsons. Um, and basically mail away this and you get information and stay up to date through the mail and on the website. So basically this just was just sort of like a big special, you know, sign up for fans and for people that wanted to, you know, stay up to date on all things Simpsons related. And uh, it's a shame I wasn't, you know, didn't join in a part of this. Uh, this is definitely something I would have loved to have been a part of. So it's pretty neat. The Simpsons.com is obviously still around, uh, but it's changed quite a bit, so. Whew, that was a lot of Simpsons stuff. Time to move on. All right, so uh, that was sort of all the bric-a-brac, uh, knickknacks uh, type stuff that um, I picked up. Um, obviously, most of this was stuff from Scott. <laughs> uh, the aliens figure, that was from the um, video game vault store in Hanover, Pennsylvania. I'll have information and links to that in the description below. Um, <coughs> I'm actually going to do a two-part video. This was all the stuff uh, that I picked up, so to speak. And then I'm going to do the video game stuff in a separate video. So I do have one last item to show you. It's pretty fucking cool. I don't know where Scott found this from. Uh, this was in the original bag, but the original bag was pretty gross. So I threw out the bag. But here we have... You got it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Power Rangers fucking Zeo. Birthday fucking birthday <clears throat> hats uh, the Power Rangers Zeo was the third uh, season I'm um, excuse me the fourth season of uh, the the Power Rangers this was the season that followed uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers season and um, so for those that was that still watch the show into that last season uh this was sort of my last memories of power rangers and let me tell you something you know power rangers zeo for what it was what it was worth and for at the time was a pretty damn good show and you know it it did pretty well for me for tying together you know kind of just tying any loose ends from the original show and you know, completing sort of character storylines and, you know, ending 
the final careers of the final couple Power Rangers. And I know Power Rangers Turbo would follow this, and Power Rangers Turbo was sort of a continuation of the original uh, crew, because there was still a couple Power Rangers that went on to do Power Rangers Turbo as well. But there was something about Zeo, like Zeo still felt like a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers show, even though it was called Power Rangers Zeo. And it still had a lot of the elements and kind of special things that made the show so good. And I think that's kind of what hurt Turbo. Because after this, I think people were ready to let go of those characters and move on. And I think Turbo kind of dragged it out longer than they needed to. And kind of, like, that's when I think a lot of people stopped watching and a lot of people jumped ship and kind of just fell out of it. Um, but Zio will always hold a special place in my heart. It was just that weird, awkward, you know, coming of age, like, you know, high school era. You know, like everyone's awkward in high school. This is kind of that, you know, when Power Rangers were growing up and you had to like kind of let go. It's like, this isn't cool to like anymore. You have to wait till you're in your late 20s, early 30s to, to start liking Power Rangers again. <laughs> So, but yeah, man, I got a fuck ton of these. Um, like I said, uh, this was all of the cool kind of, like I said, random bric-a-brac type stuff. Um, otherwise, uh, that's it.